kind of a kind of a cold and gray day here uh, today, but exciting news. We are the Frisco Super Bowl champions. my coach we won the championship uh 12 to nothing it was an amazing season uh one of the best defenses i've ever seen on a youth football team uh if any of your kids have ever played youth football or uh, you've ever been interested in youth football we we had an amazing season uh just a really really great team lots of effort lots of hustle lots of hard work um you know the we had some amazing athletes we had some kids that that really stepped up and, and played better than they should have um, and like I said, just an amazing defense um, and a really efficient offense that got us a championship. Super, super happy about it. Super excited. Hasn't quite set in yet. I think uh, I think this week, once you know, I realize that there's no practices or anything like that to go to, it'll be a different story. But um, yeah, we won. Woohoo! Amazing, amazing to to be the champion. <laughs> Okay, the main thing that I promised to talk about is our experience with buying a Tesla and with with all the little issues that we had and, and, and the delivery and, and things like that. So so to give you an idea of what we went through, so we I mentioned in the last video that we placed our order right at the what we thought was the deadline for free supercharging. So we placed our order, put on our deposit back in July. Uh, at the time, we were expecting sort of a mid-August delivery. Obviously, we knew that Model X production was basically only being done once, maybe twice a quarter. With the production that was going on for the Model 3, we assumed that, that it was probably going to take longer than we thought. We did get a hint of an update maybe a couple weeks, a month into the wait, so maybe August, uh, beginning of August perhaps, that it was going to be closer to September. And then as September came, uh, we sort of caught wind and, and saw from what other people were reporting on, on their, their delivery dates that we assumed it was going to be mid-September. So mid-September comes, um, we go through you know all the paperwork, we get everything set, we're finally given a delivery date. Great. Everything great. Excited to finally, uh, you know, have a date. Finally know when we're going to get the car. Finally be able to, you know, get insurance done and, and make sure all the little uh, ifs, ands, and buts, all the I's and T's are crossed and dotted and everything's in their place, what have you, all the cliches that you want. So we get everything ready. We come up to our delivery date. And I hadn't heard anything. I assumed we would hear something, uh, an update something you know of interest something to give us a little more detail about when to be there and things like that didn't hear anything um so the day before our delivery we get we get an update and the update is this tesla lost our model x yeah they they lost it they they didn't know where it was they couldn't tell me where it was they couldn't give me any kind of an estimate on how long it was going to take to get to us they uh they lost it it was gone this big, expensive, giant piece of technology just gone. We had seen some of the stories being reported about Model 3s and how just transporting Model 3s to service centers for delivery and delivery centers was causing such issues. You know, they'd been left behind. People were showing up to deliveries and the car wasn't there. Various things like that. So I assume that what happened was that we got bumped for Model 3. Someone's Model 3, you know, was supposed to be somewhere. And our Model X was bumped and, you know, either left behind or, or sent somewhere else to wait while this person's Model 3 was delivered. Basically what we found out is that the, um, you know, they're moving transport trucks in and, in and out so fast. And I think there was a lot of stories that were reported at the time 
about how you know Tesla was looking for car transporters. They didn't have enough car transports to get the Model 3s to the delivery centers. So what happened was our Model X was on uh, the manifest for a transport. That driver showed up, uh, picked up, picked up the truck, and took off. From what I have learned and some sort of reading between the lines and some bits and pieces of information that we found out along the way, it seems like what happened is that our Model X just hadn't been put on the transport yet. Uh, the manifest was signed, the tracking was activated, and that truck took off, but our Model X just remained uh, at production while its transport truck left. So it took about 24 hours for them to be able to find it, realize where it was, uh, get it on a new truck. They gave us a new delivery date. New delivery date came and still nothing. When they canceled my first delivery, they guaranteed me that the car would be in Texas and available for delivery um, on a particular date. They wanted at least a day to get the car ready for delivery after that. So our delivery was set for essentially three days later. Um, as that date came up, hadn't heard anything again, called them, reached out, found out that it did not show up when it was supposed to. The, you know, it was supposed to show up on X date. When I talked to them, it was still on a transport. It was not in Texas yet. And basically it was going to be another day. So here's the shitty side from our, from our side is that we had gotten a babysitter to be able to go pick up the Tesla the first time. Um, so we had to cancel that, which made the babysitter mad. Uh, we had rearranged our entire schedule once for pickup, and then we rearranged our schedule twice for delivery again. Second delivery is missed. Uh, we then find out, we finally get word exactly where the, where the Tesla is. Uh, it's essentially four or five hours out of town on a transport. We hear that it's going to be here the next day. They want, you know, 72 hours to prep the car. Our schedule didn't allow for that. We, we it was essentially... You know, we had cleared our schedule once, cleared our schedule twice. The the third time, the day that we assumed we'd be able to get it, that was really our last chance to get it that week. Otherwise, we weren't going to be able to get to the, the delivery center for at least another seven days after that. So we asked them, is there any way that we could get delivery the next day? Um, explain to them the situation. Explain to them, you know, what we'd been dealing with. Obviously, they knew from their side the you know trials and tribulations of what they've been dealing with and yeah so what they were able to do is basically as we understand it now they turned turned our model x around faster than any model x had been turned around from that that delivery center um, they actually drove it up to meet us so there's uh we have a service center down in dallas proper we're up in the north suburbs the there is a brand new that's eh, not brand new anymore there is a new tesla showroom sort of not halfway between, very close to us, um, you know, maybe 15, 20 miles north of the, that's ah, not that far, I guess, maybe 10, 15 miles north of the delivery center. I don't know. I haven't looked at a map. They actually brought the car up to us and met us at that, at that uh, showroom, which was really, really nice. They, uh, you know, so essentially they turned the car around in eight hours for us. Instead of delivering it to us at the delivery center, they delivered it to us at a supercharger. Um, they came, they took our trade away. They, you know, went over everything with us very nicely. They showed my wife everything in a uh, in one of the dealer cars at the showroom before then taking us over to the supercharger to pick up ours. All in all, you know, it it was a crazy frustrating experience. It was really really hard and challenging. I definitely have issues with the sort of operation side of Tesla and their communication. The, the worst problem we had while waiting for our delivery was communication. Uh, it seemed like we could never get a hold of anyone. The answers to the questions that we had were, were never very good. Um, no one could ever give us a definitive time about anything. They, you know, just little things. And it's just communication. It's just a little thing. But, you know, for, for this level of investment, and for, for what this is, you know, a luxury automobile, um, you know, with competing against these other, these other cars that have these long histories of amazing service and incredible experience, 
um, you know, I, I just felt like there was an opportunity there to really do something special and that they missed. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, I, I'm, I'm very aware of how above and beyond they went at the end. Um, you know, flipping the car and getting it to us as fast as they did, I understand. Um, it's, it's pretty unheard of for how these things go. They did uh, give us a credit for our, we'll call it inconvenience, um, you know, basically because of some of the things we had to deal with and the schedule flips, them changing it twice, them telling us they lost the car. Um, they did give us a little bit of, uh, of credit for service or I suppose I could buy a hat if I wanted to. And I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll probably buy a hat. Yeah, they, they, they went above and beyond. They did great. Look, once, once we were in the car, you know, everything was fine. All, all the stress and worry was out the window. Um, you know, no more, no more concern about it, about it after that. And, um, you know, we, we were happy. Everything was great. Since delivery, we have had a few more communication issues that have, have caused us some, some worry. Nothing, nothing crazy, but um, after seeing the comments on the, last, on the last couple videos, you know, I'm now seeing some trends, and I've, I'm, I've tried to talk to a few people about it. But, you know, our, uh, our temporary plates expired twice. Um, they never, no one ever told us that they had sent us a second temporary plate. Um, so, you know, we were driving around with a month old expired plate. We were told it would take a couple weeks to get our plate. It, it took two months. Um, they, I had to reach out to them and ask them where it was. They said, oh, it hasn't been made yet. We'll send you a new plate. Um, 15 minutes later, it seems like I, I got a FedEx overnight tracking number and our license plates were in my hand less than, less than 24 hours later. So, um, you know, it's, it's stuff like that. It, it just seems like they forgot to mail the license plates. And talking to some other people, it seems like that's a thing that's happened to them as well. So lots of little issues with uh, delivery and, and the weight and things like that. Look, overall, it was fine. We're, we're fine where we are now. Uh, feeling pretty good. But that's it. That's, that's the story of, of our ordering and waiting for delivery and sort of the nightmare of the last uh, few days before delivery. So thank you guys so much for watching. It means the world to me. I appreciate you stopping by the channel. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and click that little bell. Uh, it, really does, it really does help us here on YouTube. And, um, you know, I appreciate you guys watching. If, if you want to keep watching, that's the best way to do it. New Tesla videos every Monday. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, Super Bowl champion Chad coming back at you. That's a stupid thing to say. Why would I say that?